Debbie Harwood is on the line now. Um, I'm terribly sorry to have to play that first up because it's so sad. Oh, God, Leah. That's mean. Oh, I'm that, so sorry. But it's oh, so beautiful to hear that. I hadn't heard that before with Margaret. Oh, yes. It's off, off my Peaches album and I, I forgot that she sang that because I haven't listened to it for a while. Um, but wow, that um, no, that was beautiful to listen to. She, she she had the most beautiful voice, and you know, God, she's remarkable, isn't she? Uh, yeah. I just, I'm a bit stunned right now because I, 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 I God, the weird thing is I'm always asked to sing the, that song at funerals, oh. and um, mm. which is really interesting, and just, which in itself is a very very difficult thing to do. Mm-hmm. But then that song as well, every time. I'd sing it, I'd cry. So, mm. but it's perfect for Maggie right now. And yeah, um, it's just been such a shock. Mm. Yeah, and then mm. even though we knew, you know, I've known for two and a half years, we had a gig um, booked actually down in Hokitika with um, Annie Crummer and me and Maggie. Mm-hmm. And I, I used to try and get Maggie across as much as I could for concerts. And we'd sort of got this really groovy thing happening where. I did a thing called Give It A Girl, which brought together Sharon O'Neill and Shona Lang and Margaret, Annie and me. That's right. And the emphasis was, yeah, and that was great. That's been the last sort of 18 years. And that, that, that put an emphasis on our original music and our own recordings as opposed to Cat's Away covers, you know, yeah. that, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And that was amazing. And then the last few shows, including... Uh, we did the Queenstown Winter Festival, you know, a few years ago, mm. and uh, that was just Margaret, Annie, and I, and that was fantastic. And we were due to do that again, and we were literally f- flying down in two days' time, and I got the call from her beautiful husband just saying, Margaret's just had surgery and she won't be making it, and that was the last gig, you know, last time. Oh. So we've known for a long time, but there's something about... As everyone knows, you know, you can expect it and have anticipation, but when they actually go, it's it's as 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 a potent hit mm. as if you didn't know, you know, that she was ill. Yeah. Um, and I think we focus very strongly on her being alive. Mm. So you don't go there until she's actually gone. So it's been really um, tough, mm. um, and so young. Yes, you that's know, what so struck young, me. Young children. Yeah, so sad. Like, yeah. how old are her children? They're only, in, like, Maggie was a late mum, starter, so like, I think, look, I, I lose track of time, but they're around 20, so yeah. 22 and 19 or 21, and they're young and have looked after her for mm. the last couple of years or two. You know, it's been a long journey. Mm. Harrowing um, for those children. Yeah. Harrowing. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it's just, and her strength through that time, you know, it was, was incredible because she's she was bedridden for nearly 18 months. So her ability to hang on, you know, she was she was always, of all of us, mm. on, of all the cat skills, she would have been the last one I thought would have become ill in any way because she was so fit. Mm. She, she looked the same as she did when she was young. She was fit, she was exercised, she ate well, she was happy and healthy and mm. it just struck her out of the blue. Mm. So it gave us all a fright. I thought Maggie would be the last man standing, actually. Mm. Um, so, but that's that's life, isn't it? It's so weird. So random. Um, but mm. we'll, yeah, really, really random. That's mm. what I've decided to can, about cancer. Mm. What it what it is. Yeah, Peter didn't, yeah. didn't mince any words when he was talking about it yesterday. <laughs> I won't repeat what he said first up, but it's, oh. it was F cancer. <laughs> yeah. Ah. yeah. So you know, um, yeah, it's um, it, 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 it's harder to take because it's tragic and it's so early and it's so unfair. And you're right. Like I, th- yeah. I think we all looked at Margaret like. Um, she was so lithe and, and slim, and she mm-hmm. she was just such a beautiful dancer as well, and so graceful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everything she did, not a single thing was she taught. She never did dancing lessons, she never did music lessons, she just was just absolutely natural. And, you, you know, she was, the music, everything would just come out of her. I love musicians like that, or people like that, where they just are it. You know, they don't have to learn it. Yes, And they're yes. already just magnificent from the second they decide to do that, to mm. be a musician. And, you know, you know, and she was a very shy child, Margie. Absolutely mm. so shy, almost speechless. You know, she couldn't speak to people. And, um, and, and she got thrown out of the 
school choir because they told her she couldn't sing. What? She sort of put her off for a few years. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> <It's hilarious>. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. ridiculous. That a, I know. It's a great thing because it makes you realise that you don't listen to anybody. If you want to do it, do Especially it. not at and school, then, you know, especially not at yeah. school. That is where I reckon <laughs> most of this damage is done to our self-esteem is in those early days and it can just take one comment, can't it? And and you're like, oh, Absolutely. okay, you've just crushed my dreams. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what happened. And maybe if Peking Man hadn't formed, so they formed without Margie first and Pat, her brother, was the lead singer and he sort of dragged his little sister along to sing backing vocals and it wasn't long before it was very clear to everyone else, perhaps not the band so much because they, you know, they... They wanted to be it, and they they needed Margie as a as a backing vocalist. But it was very clear very quickly that she was the star <laughs> in that band, and 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 it was you know the resulting number ones, which were really hard. You know, people these days I don't you know if you know this, but there's a New Zealand charts, mm. uh, which is all New Zealand songs. So it looks great, you've got number ones and all that. But we, in those days we didn't have a New Zealand chart. The only chart we had was up against every other international song. So we were up against Michael Jackson and Prince and you know the whole world. So for a New Zealand band then to get a number one was incredible. Yeah. And Margie had three, I think. Um, and he was one of the most successful. Mm. And when, yeah, so whereas now you can, uh, I know, the charts have changed. But it was really hard to get any, any traction. Extremely. And, as you know, almost impossible to get airplay. So yeah. it, was, um, it was a tough time. But, I, I um, wonder whether... Yeah, she went, oh, yeah, sorry to interrupt, Debbie, but I just go. wonder whether... No, no. You know, when she went to Australia and she, she pulled right back from public life in a way. And I wonder whether that was the reason because maybe the 80s were quite traumatic in a way in terms of coming up against some, you know, some big roadblocks and some major sexism, I guess, in the industry too. Yeah, what there was initially. Thankfully, she had uh, fantastic support. She she had some great men support her. So um, uh, Michael Gladding from CBS and and Murray Tom, who just absolutely got her and worshipped her, in, in a really healthy way. Uh, he saw her talent and saw through all that. Wouldn't and then they wouldn't take any shit. So when she went to Australia, she was very supportive, and she did two or three albums and then they dropped her and the thing about those days was with major record labels mm. if you're dumped it's just very hard to come back from that yeah. because the assumption is off oh, they've dumped you there must be something wrong or you know but and that's just not true it was just the nature of the time i feel sad that maggie didn't continue to release um Mm. Probably the the main problem with that is the cost of it, and then you know she wouldn't have got airplay. You know it's very youth based industry anyway, mm. and so there's almost no point in putting anything out. So which is sad because she was <laughs> like the, she could drum, she could play piano, she could play guitar, all self taught. Mm. She she just oozed music, and I was I got to sing as much as I could over the years. We recorded a song actually that I should send you that was mm. never released. Right, uh, I'd love to hear. It. Uh, yeah, James Taylor song, which was Kim, uh, Margaret, and me, and it's Shower the People. It's a brilliant recording um, by Ian Morris, who was also a bloody genius. So, yeah. Yes, uh, that's right. And that song, yeah, yeah, and I think we did try and get, try to get a little bit of airplay, but it's so uh, rigidly programmed now, you know, that you can't get a look on really. Yeah. Um, but that's a great it's song, a great song, Debbie, Shower yeah, the People. Oh, yes. Yeah, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Gorgeous. you know, and it's interesting because, like, playing that, that, you know what I'd like to do, actually? Um, I, I'd like to play another one of your songs and then we come back. Is that okay? Because uh, I've just sure. been delving into your catalogue a wee bit and I've, I've lined up Grace. So I thought we'd hear that now, oh. if that's cool. Yeah, does this, uh, is that cool with you? <laughs> yeah, no, that'd be amazing. The song's about Grace Mullane. Oh, um, fantastic. Oh, yeah, I wrote it in the middle of the night before they found her. And uh, it just, uh, I, oh God, it was a bit of a story there. Do you mind if I just quickly I'd tell love you to tell, no, after? no, I want you to tell me now. It'd be okay. great. Yeah, please. Okay, so my mother and father had just died and they died within weeks of each other. And I was home and I wasn't very well at the time and I was cleaning up their house and they were they were hoarders. Uh, it was great fun. And um, they hadn't cleaned the house since 1961. Uh, so it was a yeah, massive yeah. job. <laughs> it I would be terrible. Oh, oh. 
It was just awful. And I wasn't, I was exhausted. I remember going home and I was covered in bite mites and I was exhausted and I was just nodding off to sleep. And the song came in, uh, Grace. It started to arrive and I was like, no, 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 not now. I need to sleep. I need to sleep. But the thing with those songs, if you don't grab them at the time when you do go to sleep, you can't, you can't pick them up in the morning. Right. They arrive when they want to. So I knocked the song down. I threw the night and then had to get on, on with cleaning the house out. And at that stage, I didn't actually, or we didn't know what had actually happened to Grace. We sort of knew someone had killed her, but, um, we didn't know. So that song is about that because often the people don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and I'm, well, that, I'm glad yeah. you told the story because I think everyone was feeling sick at that time in our country. It really impacted us. I still feel sickened yeah. about about that. Actually, I, I also get very angry. Yeah. So um, this this could Same. be quite, this could be quite healing, actually. So quite cathartic. Yeah. yeah let's let's do it now. And you you grab your, okay. you grab yourself a cuppa, and we'll be right back yeah. <laughs> with Debbie Harwood. <laughs> it's powerful. I love that Thank show, you. The World Your Sunshine. Very 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 yeah. nice. Very you nice. Know, the strangest thing about that was, uh, you know, I thought, oh, this is weird, you know, but I thought it was if Grace was with me as, when I was writing that. And a year later, it was released on a particular day, and I was on Jesse Mulligan's show just about to perform it for the first time mm. live. And the verdict was being read at, <gasps> in the court for the guy Gosh. that day. And it came out while I was on air and guilty and her father came outside and said on the microphone she was our sunshine and I just about fell off my chair I was like oh my goodness you know it was just so in turn but no I didn't get any at all but um, that was a great experience yeah um and yeah so you were re- you were really in tune. No, no, no. With 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 the whole with what that family and and the, were going through and their pain, and mm-hmm. but also the nice thing about that is it's kind of a little bit of light at the end of a song about a dreadful episode, yeah. isn't it? Correct. I, I started off with a very melancholy end actually, and I thought, oh no, no, no. What I want. I want young, you know, young women to feel they can travel and they can go out in the world. And I was angry too. I was so angry that her death was like a critical mass situation where just stop hurting girls and mm. me, women and be nice. Mm. You know, I, just, I mean, she she went awful. on a date for crying out loud. You know, she was young. She right. was which which we all I mean, we all went to London and you know and and went yeah. out and. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, and it's just it was it was horrifying, and it just brings everything back. Actually, yeah. hearing that, but uh, you said it would be yeah. amazing to play the song, so amazing grace. <laughs> there we Thank go, you. amazing grace. So we're talking. Oh, with, love- yeah, it's good, right? We're talking with Debbie Harwood, yeah. who, have, who has kindly agreed to speak, even though her heart's breaking. I know your heart's breaking with the loss of of Margaret, and yeah. you know, but there must be so you must have had so much fun. And I know you were reticent about setting up When the Cat's Away, but I want to go right back to that because, I mean, Mm -hmm. there's something about that group that just was super joyful and and the harmonies and everything were just wonderful. Everyone adored you, all of you. Yeah. It's it's something that people have tried to replicate and can't. And and we've had a sort of a lot of, not criticism, but people who don't really know us will we'll just write us off as a dumb covers band but in fact it was where it all came from the different women and their different voices we all knew each other we were friends there was this heart connection we, we came, you know and as you know it came out of being tired in the sense of having original bands and struggling for airplay and also touring and losing mm. money and yeah you know it was a very yeah. tough time to a band back then mm. um, and so we just literally you know just basically adored each other and decided to have a scene together and that's where it started and I think that that chemistry and just that sort of um, that meld of individuals and voices just worked and we, we there was no way you could plan that uh, in any kind of way. Mm. It was certainly not a business plan or, you know, people go, oh, they only did it for the money. I'm like, oh, God, we had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just something you, you cottoned on. It was your kind, you drove it, didn't you, really? I dreamt it. <clears throat> I dreamt it. So yeah. I woke up in the, and I got the feeling about this thing, this, this, this band, this idea of gathering. It started in my mind with Margaret Manny, actually, and 
Um, and it sort of went from there. And I, I drink it and then I drink the name and it just was supposed to be. And I, that's why I completely trust my gut now and, and that as an adult mm. as I got older because mm. I took the idea to quite a few people and because I, I, you know, I wanted to sing and they all went, oh, no, that won't work. No, oh, that's ridiculous. That won't work. <laughs> Man, what a terrible idea. <laughs> Everybody without exception. So I couldn't get anyone to sign us or manage us. Mm. And um, I said, but I just sort of knew in my gut there was a fire <laughs> burning. I just knew uh, it was going to be to work. a beautiful thing. Yeah. And, and there was something about more than the you know, the voices or whatever. There was something on that stage that people just loved. And we watched... You know, we'd stand on that stage and just look at the sea of teeth of happy, smiling people, you know, and it was the best thing. And we had, um, uh, there was the humour in that group. It was unbelievable. Oh. Gay people are right. Yes, yes. <laughs> it, it was, you were boisterous and naughty and giggly and, um, and you just had yeah. so much fun, didn't you? You just had so much fun yeah. doing it. You know? The wit, you know, when we could, like, I've never laughed so much in my life. And I think, I was thinking yesterday, in the 40 years I've known Maggie uh, and been her friends, um, you, you, uh, you, yeah, um, the, you take the certain things for granted until, you, until you're in this situation. And I realised, you know, when we catch up with girlfriends normally, you know, we go down and have a meal or they come over and you have some wine and cheese and maybe something to eat. We... Our socialising was getting walking on the stage together, so we were in the in the band room before the show. It was our world, our life, but it was also our our social life as well. And then we get on the stage together, have a big fat thing, mm. and then get off the stage, <laughs> and then and then just laugh for two or three hours <laughs> hysterically yeah. with all the adrenaline. And you, you know what it's like when you yeah. before a gig you had to turn it with fear and then you get off the stage and you can't shut up <laughs> and there's adrenaline pouring <laughs> around the body and and I think we frightened a few people. A few people have said to us that we, we did a few um, outdoor shows and we were getting dressed in tents. You know, we were in tents mm. and we forgot that tents don't have walls. And so uh, <laughs> after the night, and there'll be people, you know, groups of men and management and all that sort of stuff, or people involved with Margie and stuff, who were um, just horrified at the conversation. <laughs> Yeah. They were just they didn't know women talked like that. It was great. Oh, so, so it was was Margaret life. was Margaret quite um one of the less rowdy members of, of Cats? No, no. No, she was right <laughs> into it. No. Oh, Margie was one of the funniest people I've ever met and you can hear her in that fire recording. She's the one talking about <laughs> Tritkin's promise or something. No, no, that's no. But no, Margaret had the most incredible sense of humour and she could mimic anything and she would come she was the master of the quip and the one liner. Ah. So we'll all be ranting on and then she'll throw something in <laughs> and then we'd all just collapse in a heap. She <laughs> she was incredibly funny. And then also in really gentle as a person and a beautiful mother and her children are identical to her. They're really calm and loving and sweet. But then on the other flip of side of that is because of what we all went through as women in this business, you know, she also will take no shit either. So business, I yeah, right. that Margie. Mm -hmm. And she was egoless as well. So she, she knew her, her, her talent, she knew her worth, but she had no ego. I never, ever once saw Marg act out, you know, or, you know, just, she was never, she was always amazing. Like really and humble. And I mm. oh yeah. And trust, she really trusted me. She knew that I would never, as, as my father would say, put her crook. So she <laughs> yeah. absolutely trusted me as a completely compliant yeah. with everything we were doing, you know. And it's often the most talented ones who are like that. Mm. to something that surprises people. But, um, <laughs> yeah, she was just beautiful to work with uh, as well. You know. But God, stand by, you know, stand on the stage with, bloody hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it was, it, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just so wish that... Um, you know, we could get those days back of uh, just, I, I think you, you were interviewed a few years back and you said, you know, there was nothing more magnificent than than a group of women uh, like that uh, singing together and performing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you made a comment that some people said, oh, you're a dumb covers band. But in fact, when you were mm -hmm. live, 
uh, that, that just put paid to that nonsensical sort of <laughs> yeah. accusation. It wasn't that at all. It was uh, it was kind of like a scene and a vibe, and you kind of it was almost like going it was like going to the Top Twins. You know, that was that gave you joy yeah. and happiness on one level. When you saw when the cats away, it was a whole nother thing, wasn't yeah. it? Because but also, but just each individual voice was so. Looking yeah. strong, that I think, and and them together. When you saw, you guys just went to the, to the to the stars, didn't mm-hmm. you? Really, there was no no stopping mm-hmm. you. Yeah, we had the perfect meld. I was the, I'm the deep voice and and the and the loud voice, and then Mar- uh, and Annie on top, Margie next, Diane next, Kim next, me at the bottom, and um and there's just and the different tone tone tones. I mean, Margie's vibrato is just beautiful, and then you've got Annie's clarity. So uh, these days, what they would have done with us, they would have just homogenised the whole lot and mixed them and compressed them, put them together, made it sound more like a block like an instrumental block. Mm. I just adored that the character in every voice in us is still there. Yeah. And it, that's what gives it the life. And I mean, that's how I produce vocals now, is I just I keep all the life in there, keep all the breaths, keep it real, you know. So, mm. um, it was, yeah, it was pretty, when I think back now, <laughs> Uh, so actually, I just realised that one of the last shows that Margie did was with at Salmon Sound. Right. Um, not that not that long ago, because it was a gig I, I couldn't. First gig of my life, I couldn't make because I had right. heart failure and I couldn't couldn't go. Yeah, gosh, you've um, had some struggles, haven't you? Golly, you're incredible. How oh are you doing God, now? Yeah. <laughs> How are you going? Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah, still in heart failure. I, I basically my life's completely changed, and I I don't do anything. I have to stay still if I exert. I'm in real trouble, so I can't get enough oxygen. So, um, but as long as I'm sitting still, I look perfectly normal, which is sort of good. Um, but I, having had a life that I was always so active and mm. so bouncy and busy, mm. it's it's really hard to not be able to get up and go for a walk or do something. So I felt like I was in a way taking one for the team and yes. that it would be right. me. Yes. But, you know, I really yes. did. So when I heard that Margie was ill, it broke my heart because I wanted to be that. You know, I didn't want... I was already sick, so I didn't want her to be sick either as well. That just felt so unfair. Okay, I said to her, but it's supposed to be me. You know, I just... Uh, yeah. I, she would have been the last person I thought would have been ill. So, so mm. I'm still here, but Margie's gone. Mm. And uh, mm. it's a really sad, 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 sad thing. But everything changed, you know, when she couldn't sing anymore because I've always been about gathering up women, as you know, together. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because that often is, you know, someone's got to do it. Yeah. We do get, <laughs> we do tend to even still get over, overlooked, you know, when they mm. think about New Zealand musicians, like, the default setting was to always go to the guys, you know. Mm. Oh, yeah, Neil Finn, Dave Dobbin, <laughs> Jordan, blah, blah, blah. And I go, yeah, and what about the women? Mm. What about Margaret? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah. It's not, the, yeah. it's not the first thought. So I sort of have felt like I've spent the last 25, 30 years battling to keep the awareness of the women of Shana and Sharon and Annie and mm. Margie. Mm. Um, because if I, I think if I hadn't, Margie probably wouldn't have visited New Zealand that often. Um, mm. You know, she would have been more, you know, quietly living in the Highlands. Yes, in teaching music. New South Wales. Yeah. Yeah, teaching music and loving it and really happy. She was so happy just before she got sick. She was really loving her life. She rang me and said, oh, dear, I'm so happy. I love what I'm doing and my little students. And I was so excited for her. And then obviously mm. within weeks, they, it she all came crashing down. But yeah. And, you know, so... And wow. brain cancer, so really, really awful. Really awful. So, you know, yeah. So cruel, hey? So cruel. Yes. Oh, my God. And, and you know, that old adage, life is short, but it is just even shorter than that. Mm. You know, we, it is so short. And, and those years when we were together as a band, you know, so we thought we had decades ahead of us, you know, but you don't, you don't, and mm. things happen, so you just got to fully commit, get in there, do it the best you can, and uh, enjoy every moment, which is what we try to do, mm. definitely as a group. I'll um, say. Well, do you know what, you mentioned Sharon. I found out Sharon. something that I... Yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry, darling, what was I was just going to say we've actually lined up um, Asian Paradise because you mentioned Sharon O'Neill, and oh, um, yeah. and what a what a wonderful woman she is and a great you know um, 
well, New Zealand performer, and people oh. still people still swoon over Sharon, and people still, and particularly this song. So I'm really excited to hear when the cat's away uh, performing this. So should we do that and then come oh, yes. come back? Oh, so yes. yeah, gra- yes. grab another drink, <laughs> and we'll yes. we'll be back after this with Debbie. <laughs> yes, it's ju- it's just wonderful. You're such an inspiration. You really totally are. I mean, you are. Oh, God. You are. You really are. Look at you. Like like you said. I mean, you've had s- so many struggles and so much has been taken from you, but your focus is on positivity and you know and it, mm. it can't be easy because like you say you've had to you've had to pair back the debbie that you knew you know yeah, yeah. that's right yeah yeah it's an interesting illness and maggie would have been dealing with that too you know when you yeah. suddenly can't do it's one thing you know you know people are sick but then you go well that the whole life's changed you know they're not singing they're not doing the new, usual things they do they're unable to socialize so you lose everything so it's quite a it's actually a very uh it's a mental thing as much as it is a physical thing if not more i think in many ways but it's all good i mean i am a very naturally optimistic person you are I right get very excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. Am. you laugh a lot i'm very excited yeah. i think i can do it all yeah i yeah. don't know why i'm like that i've always been like that um and just always, and the thing is, I've always come up with ideas and then actually been able to manifest them. And the, the, so my brain has been driving me nuts because I come up with all these ideas and I go, ah, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that's what? genius. And I wake up the next day and go, oh, I can't breathe. Oh, okay. uh, this is not good. Yeah, yeah. Stop it, body. I'm, I'm trying to move on. Yeah. Hey, so Debbie, yeah. are you are you writing still? Then you still must get bouts of inspiration. You know, writing songs. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've got. I have more songs that um, I really want to record. But you know, with, at the risk of whinging, mm. um, <laughs> it's an interesting road because my my last EP, which was only a couple of years ago, um, the one that Grace is on, mm. um, you know, it cost me probably twenty five thousand dollars all up with everything. You know, by the time yeah, I recorded and paid the band and all that stuff, and then you need I see a sent back. So at some point, you know, and I've got two or three more songs I need to record, but, <clears throat> you know, it seems frivolous. And there's mm. also a thing Mike Chung coined as the roar of the crowd, which I totally agree with. And this has been part of the problem for New Zealand bands, is mm. that unless you hear the roar of the crowd, you don't know whether you're doing, doing something it right. right or not, whether it, yeah, yeah, whether it's okay. And that, that will push you forward. But when you're sort of a a wee girl sitting at home with no one around writing songs, you you don't really know <laughs> whether there's any point in mm. doing it. Yes. But um, having yes. said that, you know, it's sad not to. So I have got a couple. And I might just do these ones, piano and voice, which would be nice. It would be beautiful. It's it's so not frivolous. It's It's who you are. You know, it's important. Yeah, if, I think so. if you can do it, yeah, it's who you are. It's, hey, how's your band you. going, Leah? Oh, <laughs> Chuck! Oh, Chuck! Don't you turn the interview on me? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I love to see you. I hate being I interviewed. <laughs> Oh, hey, <laughs> hey, well, listen, to, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. So, um, well, this year's been interesting because, well, um, we had, you know, we had a covers band and we were sort of doing rock stuff because yes. I'm a bogan Fakatani girl and I quite enjoyed, you know, yes. doing all that, <laughs> plus a few sort of witchy, you know, Fleetwood Mac ones and what have you. Anyway, the drummer yeah. quit and then, you know, the pandemic and everything got cancelled and we couldn't ever practice because every time we'd try, someone else was sick. And I seemed to spend... Oh pretty yeah. much from June till now being sick so I've had more time off than ever this year I've just had everything going oh. you know, I just with flu and COVID oh you know but yeah so so it's wow. been like um very little on the um <laughs> on the live you know uh, music front lately yeah. but I did have a terrific experience last week which I can't say too much about which involved um Ooh. Re- Recording some originals, which is which was probably the best <gasps> four days of my life, and um, yes, yeah, absolutely, it was. And now all yes. I think about is that, and so that. it oh was my God, wonderful. That's so, exciting. so that was lovely. That is the best thing yeah. on earth, isn't it? To do your own stuff and feel them coming together as as you record them. It's like bliss. If if heaven if, if heaven's like that, like being in a yes. place writing a song and seeing it come to fruition, then it would be a lovely place to be. I it's think an so. Incredible experience. I think so. Oh, and when I, I got to that you. place, yeah, it was it was really life changing. <laughs> it was really profound. It was it was like okay, if I had like two months to live, I just want to do this until I pop off. Yeah. You know, I was. Yeah. Or what, I mean, that's, that's a very that's negative <laughs> approach. But do you know, I was like. 
All right. This yeah, it was it was profound is the only way I can describe yeah. it. And now it's like the waiting and and it was with yeah. a, a brilliant, a wonderful group of, you know, really gifted like musicians, like really, really and, and fantastically patient and, and, and supportive. So that oh, that made yeah. it really, yeah. really pleasant and and not mm-hmm. not stressful at all. Like the opposite. It was just no. like yeah. it was really cathartic yeah. too. <laughs> it was all it was everything. Yeah. It was really cool. Um so I'll tell oh. you so that was great. But I would like to get the old um fun, you know, covers band cranked up again. I mean our next booking is it till November and we really we haven't seen each other for oh. ages. And uh, it's been tough in yeah. the south. A lot of people have been really crook over and over again, you know, and young people too, you wow. know, because I'm the I'm the yeah. would I be the oh no no we've got a guy in, our, in the seventies <laughs> in our band actually he's awesome, but he sailed through um, COVID and everything no problem and was kind of <laughs> laughing at me as I got everything going you know flu and oh, infections golly. and blinking, yeah so he was he was heavy saying what's wrong with you I had it and I barely noticed <laughs> you know probably um, <laughs> drinks enough whiskey to get by. You yeah, know, that's right. I'm a great believer in whiskey. Yeah, it I, everything. I, I reckon, right? I reckon more hard liquor for, for Leanne next year. I say that every year. Take up smoking, drink, because exactly. honestly, what is the point in yeah. trying to be healthy? You know, I try so hard. It doesn't help. Yeah. You know, I eat well. What's the no, point? it doesn't work. It doesn't it's work. It's something else. It doesn't work, Debbie, <laughs> honestly. So, yeah, look, music. So, you know, I don't care. I'm like you. So long as it's music, music, music around me, then I'm happy. You know, even listening to others. Yes. Discovering new bands, you know, mm-hmm. is cool because that keeps you young, doesn't it? As well, I think, you know. Oh yeah, it absolutely does. Yeah, music—it's—it's—it's it's, 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 you know, it's just five dimensions. So it takes you to another place. I think at the moment with this country moaning and whinging every day about things that actually don't matter, mm. they should all just get some more music in their lives. I think. Yeah, <laughs> we can and try be a little bit happier. Yeah, you know, I, we're so lucky I think so. Well. <laughs> we are. We're not too bad, are we? You know, and maybe when this better yeah, weather comes, we'll awesome. we'll start appreciating the good things we've got. I think. I think it's. Mm, and I, I think sometimes it's winter. As you say, performing. Mm. You know, yeah, that's our winter. Yeah, and we're supposed to hunker down in winter. Mm. That's what we do. I always go back to Neolithic man. We <laughs> should be hunkering down in the cave for a bit. Yeah. We'll pop out when the daffodils do and yeah. get back into it. That's right. And actually, our timing's been great because we had the COVID things through winter. Mm. Uh, whereas in the northern hemisphere, they had them through summer, which for the festivals and concerts must have been a complete nightmare. But in New Zealand, there's nothing happening between May and September normally anyway. So we were lucky. We were locked down at a time we're normally locked down. Yeah, so, true. Um, yeah, I think we've been really lucky, and uh, and we'll we'll gradually get back into it. I, yeah, we will. I, I mm. don't know if I'll be able to sing much. I've, I've got a couple of little shows. I'll see how I go, but mm. breathing's an issue. So yeah. Well, I, well, yeah, how did you did you just quickly did you get COVID? No, I no. I have. Dodged that Fantastic. bullet somehow. Well, by yeah. isolating, actually. Mm. Um, I'm terrified of getting it because everyone around me's had it and they've struggled. And I think, oh, I might as well just book myself into hospital the day I get it, you know, mm. because of the lung, lung thing. Lung thing. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah. No, yeah. I've been um, I've good. been really lucky. Well, that's good. I'm very grateful. Something to, to yeah. You know, to the, well, a quiet the government for giving us all vaccinated. A quiet life, eh? Yeah. Can can help, yeah. <laughs> As well, yeah, yeah hide, very, very <laughs> just hide out, <laughs> Debbie. I've got to ask you. You know, I mean, and you might mm. laugh in my face, but obviously, you know, it would be lovely to, you know, to do something musical to mark Margaret's passing. Do you ever think that uh, you, Diane, Kim, and Annie could perhaps do some sort of thing together, or that would just be too much? Like, is that something you consider? Uh, I haven't even thought about that, but um, Maggie's not having a funeral. She's going to have a concert slash memorial at some point. And actually, that, that is a beautiful idea. And we, we should, def- I'll definitely talk to the women about that. Mm. Um, or something, you know, there'll be something we, there, yeah, something musical has to happen uh, for this, I think. As far mm. as, yeah, no, you've got me thinking. I haven't put my brain there, but mm. I will. I couldn't talk until this morning, so I'll be... Yeah. <laughs> you can't shut me up now, though, right? So, no. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm I, back. <laughs> I was a little worried when you said you were mute because I thought this is going to be the shortest uh, chat ever on radio, and I've managed yeah. to haul you through a whole hour and 
probably exhaust you. I hope not. But um, no, I've loved it. Oh. I've loved it. I love talking about music. I love love you, and I love talking about Margie. So it's, it's an absolute. It's pure joy for me. As sad as it is, just, mm. but having known someone that amazing and being such a close friend of hers and and her so much beauty in her, mm. um, it's just I'm realising I'm just so lucky. Um, yeah, mm. so lucky. So I'm very grateful for that time we did have. And well, yeah. So, but we've just got to keep making music, as you say, Liam. That's a very bloody good point. Well, I think so. In one form or another, mm-hmm. yeah. So I think so. If it's what really if it important. if it's what drives you, then do what makes mm. you happy, and you know, and don't stop. Just you know, as as long as you can, as long as your body lets you. I think is is the way to go. <laughs> yeah. But do you know, um yeah. but no, it's been a it's been a beautiful chat and um I, I do honestly mean that. You are yeah. a, you are an inspiration, you're a wonderful woman and we love your voice oh, and um kind of th- thank you so much for today. And you know what I've got now? Oh, I've got another song of yours oh. and I this will be another right. tear jerker, right? Everybody's gotta learn sometime. Oh Oh, so, oh that's uh Yeah. Uh and my so that's Kim is, that. is that Kim and you? I thought it was the t- two of you. No, just Kim and Oh, my one on there is anyone who had a heart. Oh, the album. Okay, and that's actually quite a good track. Oh. I mean, I haven't heard it for a long time, but that album Peaches is on Spotify now. I finally put all that stuff yeah. up on the platforms, including all the Cat's Row stuff. Oh, good. And my albums, and 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 also, uh, I, oh God, you'll love this, Leanne. Yeah, I, I we found I found a cassette in a box. And um, a few years ago, and I had a listen, and it was the most phenomenal mm. recording of a live concert in Whangarei in a club. And at that <laughs> club were, right. were all of the All Blacks. And so there was the trials. Up, there were the trials up in Whangarei. So we had the you know, Kerwin and Kirky and all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they were all there. And it's a recording from that night. It's one of the best. The band were phenomenal. That is up on Spotify too and um, iTunes and all of that stuff. Yeah. And it's uh, called uh, Cat's Way Live at Tips. Do you want to hear Margaret on her full yeah. string? Yeah. That's the album to listen to. Completely okay. live, not, not, not redone at all. Um, but on Peaches, yeah, I did Anyone Who Had a Heart and Go on that. But I invited other women. They're all my favourite songs. So it was my an album of love songs. But I, did, I lacked confidence, believe it or not, back then and thought, oh, it might be more interesting if I get some women fans to sing on them. But I produced it and I chose the songs and I, you know, and then I just got the girls to sing. So. Mm. Um, well, I'll look that up people. because I've got another two hours on air. So what I'll do is I'll play that Kim Willoughby song uh, next hour and I'll also yeah. um, look up the uh, the Whangarei um, show. And live at Pips. Oh, live at Pips. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Live at Pips. And listen, we'll 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 run a through tracks, uh, a few tracks from it uh, through through the next hour. That'll be su- that'll be super fun. Yeah, that sounds that's yeah. a great idea. And you know, so much music, isn't there? You start scratching the surface, and that's what I'd say to people: is like, you know, there's, the sad thing is, a lot of the artists that I get on the show, they all say, you know, no one really plays these songs on radio. No, I don't. You know, they don't really get any any airtime. So how the hell are we supposed to know, you know, what's out there? So yeah. I, I think it's really cool to have people like yourself and to bring back these tracks and and even me, you know, I'm, you know, because Lord yeah. knows that radio is pretty sanitised music radio and there's nothing groundbreaking like there are, is in other countries, you know, like no. on, you know, some of those great music stations in the States and, and the UK. It's one thing we yes, need. need more. Um, the only stations that do are student stations. There's student stations in this country. Right. Fa- fantastic, you know. Thank God for that. And if you're, if you're considered <laughs> yeah. mainstream, if you're considered mm. like mainstream, you don't get paid on anything. No. So it's like all of the Auckland bands in the in the eighties, you know, including Sailor and and mm. the Mockers and mm. Dancer Spons, they could not get airplay because student radio wouldn't play them because yeah. they considered them mainstream. <laughs> and mainstream wouldn't play them, so they just fell completely through the cracks, yeah. which would happen nowhere else in the world. No. And no. you know, We've treated our, our musicians really poorly in this country. Shocking. But that's another day. Do you know what, Debbie? We've got to news yeah. time. You and I need to do this again in the future. Uh, okay. So let's catch yep. up soon and uh, let's not be strangers. And, and uh, thanks so, so much. That'd be lovely. I'm due for a trip. Yeah, do it. Let's do it. Come, come, and, come and see me in person in Queenstown and also come back on the show in a, in a few months. So do it. I'd love to. <laughs> okay, I'd darling. It's been, so a, it's been such a pleasure, and you take care of yourself too, hey? Lots of love to you. Thank you, Debbie. Same Thanks. to you. Thanks. See you soon, darling. Take care. Thank okay, you. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Debbie Harwood uh, saying goodbye. Beautiful woman, uh, a wonderful chat. I hope you enjoyed it too.